Hey, and welcome to a longer video about multiple topics, which include technology changes in 2024, um, mainly for gaming, okay? But it's obviously performance improvements in general, uh, gaming comparison between uh, Windows and Linux for, the, for 2024, and Ubuntu improvements overall, okay? If you're watching the longer video, then that means that you'll, you'll be able to hear everything that I'm about to talk here. If not, you can wait for the three part video that will be talking about just tech news, another one just Ubuntu related, especially Ubuntu 24.04 and up. And then lastly, the Windows versus Linux video, which all three are going to be talked about right now, but you can watch each specific one later if you want to. So, with that said, Let's start with the tech news. So technology changes in 2024 alone, just alone for gaming performance and compatibility. Okay, there's more changes, positive changes in general, but I'm just going to be talking about gaming performance in, in general. So just in the 2024, we've seen everybody that has uh, actually used their kernels from more or less 6.6, .6, especially 6.7 .7 through 6.10 has seen in, in many areas of the hardware from CPU to RAM to motherboards to SSDs to NVMe to drivers for video cards, etc. have seen multiple performance improvements okay, overall. In the case of Ubuntu 24.10, for example, in October, it's going to be coming out with 6.11. And I mentioned that because it just so happens that version 6.11 alone, that kernel version, is coming with multiple performance improvements everywhere. CPU, motherboard, bandwidth, you name it, you name it, and, and from different types of uh, hardware. Okay. For the whole year 2024, we've seen changes in the like better swappiness, speedier swappiness, I would say. If you've been using a hybrid CPU, like in my case, you literally, you can feel the change uh, for the better CPU hybrid support that I now it's included, especially since January that I started noticing that. Better CPU power management, you, you'll notice that on Ubuntu 24.04 immediately, the way that it handles that. If you have a 4K monitor right now and you're watching this video, you can actually see my, the clock, my CPU clock, at the top and the temperature. So it's like right now it's 914 or to 1.1 gigahertz at 37 Celsius. Okay. That's something that I was not able to achieve. Let's put it like that. When the, the, the computer was more of um, um, like in power safe mode, let's put it like that, or basically just not doing anything at all. Like in this case, it's, I'm just recording a, a video. So it's very light, the, the kind of work that I'm doing right now. And I was not able to achieve so low um, the clock and the temperature too. So that's what this better CPU hybrid support and better CPU power management bring. In general, over the past six, we can say six months, uh, we've also seen better file system performance for Butterfly FS, and especially um, the one that I'm using is X4 optimizations that I've seen there, um, better scheduler. So you, you also know about the change from the CF, from the, you know, the CFS that we were using before to the new EEVDF scheduler. And that really also helps in regards to the, the, the CPU management part. Okay. And well, actually you'll feel the, the system more snappier literally more snappier. There's also some future things that are being worked on this, during this year, which is auto FDO, the propeller performance boost that we've seen so far, uh, especially the impact that it has on, on gaming. The scheduler X that it, it didn't, it won't come out for 611. Uh, Linux Torvald mentioned something like that, but Linux Torvald is also happy with it, with, with the work that's being done with it. You can see here the URL, and I'll be putting all this in the description below. So you can actually just read my notes that I've been making for this video, plus visit the links that are related to this. 
do know that if you analyze the scheduler here, this specific scheduler work, it it sells or it gives the impression that games will have twice as much FPS. No, that's that's not the point of this thing. So with this open the idea of a better hybrid scheduler selector depending on the workload type. That's what a scheduler does, but it, this actually helps in thinking about future optimizations that could be done for the Linux scheduler or the one that's being used there. there there's other schedules like Bohr and blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a couple that I can't even mention because of the, their naming. Um, but there are other schedulers that tackle or focus on specific tasks on, on Linux. I'm just mentioning the ones that are more popular or default here. So would this open the idea of a better hybrid scheduler? Yeah, it, it will. And it would make it maybe make better workload decision making with that. Uh, the video explanation that I found was this one. That's great. It's like, um, was it like two weeks ago or something like that? And do note that this is not related to boosting the FPS of games by two, but actually lowering the performance impact of background tasks on foreground tasks, like in this case, uh, gaming. Okay, so you will eventually see or feel a performance boost, uh, snappier system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, just, just a note, something to take into consideration, but you'll feel, you know how on Windows you sometimes something is running on the back and the, the whole thing just freezes or more or less feels like that. That's what would be solved here. Even though, even though I have to say that EVDF actually solved that for me on my on my 1300K at least. So this the whole Ubuntu 24.04 experience right now is fresh. Even though I've been using Ubuntu for years, it's fresh because the whole system just feels different. You feel like it's faster in every way. So coming back, we have some video technology changes in the world um, on Linux for 2024, which is we're now actually seeing better uh, variable refresh rate. I know that some people have actually customized the whole thing or did some tweaking here and there for it to actually work like in K KDE or stuff like that. I'm only mentioning what's being worked on as a default, so nobody has to worry about it. Uh, same thing for NVIDIA support for explicit sync. It got added in like basically the, the everything that's popular with it. Better Wayland support for NVIDIA. Um, better doesn't doesn't mean that it's finished. It's being worked on or made better, but we still got to wait for the 550, 560 driver release, official one. Hopefully at that time it would be Wayland would just work beautifully with NVIDIA, or actually NVIDIA would work beautifully with Wayland. But let, let's just wait because right now uh, the 560 is, is still, at the moment of recording this video, is still in beta version. Okay. During this year, NVIDIA actually released 555, which is the one that I'm using, basically grabbing huge points in the performance part from work that actually started two years ago because I've been tracking that kind of, um, let's say, testing that they've been doing. The moment that I install the 555, I will show you in another video about Ubuntu, the Ubuntu uh, 2404 performance, you will see what I'm talking about when I say that they actually boosted a lot the performance on Linux. NVIDIA also released the 560 beta version, okay, which is where the whole thing will officially start with the open kernel module ecosystem that they're, they're working together with um, in the Linux world. And that one also includes additional work for VRR, HDR, and more things that we currently only see, by default at least, on Windows, or that you at the moment have to customize or tweak in, a, in one way or another uh, in order for them to actually work on your system. Um, I won't go into details for that. What I'm trying to get to is for people to just install the driver and voila, the thing just works, okay? Do know that this whole open kernel module ecosystem thing that NVIDIA is making is not as open sourced as the AMD or Intel that we have so far. Okay. NVIDIA did 
uh, there were some benchmarks of NVIDIA done for the kernel module versus the proprietary um, one, and they are basically aligned. We're talking very, very, very similar right now, very similar uh, performance, which I'm hoping in the future will either be the same, exactly the same, or the kernel module will have better support or better performance in general. Okay, Proton. Proton came out with version 9, which is the one that I'm using for all the videos that I've been recording. That brings better DirectX 12 support. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you've seen that I'm, I'm actually being playing, especially for the crashing part, with DirectX 12, Witcher 3, I think Hogwarts Galaxy 2, I, I forgot, the, the Cyberpunk, uh, maybe? I think it was Vulcan or something. Anyway, the ones that gave me the option of DirectX 12, I selected DirectX 12. I haven't had any crashes, any crash. doesn't mean that you're not going to have any crash, but at least in my specific case, I haven't had any crash yet. I do have to mention that DirectX 12 received like a huge performance improvements over DirectX 11 or compare against DirectX 11 using Proton 9 for some of the games that you're going to see that have been recording. So you got to go back to those videos and, and watch them and compare them against your own or older videos, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, new Mesa release with the 2401. Remember, bringing explicit sync, which is the, the, the work that NVIDIA, GNOME, KDE, Wayland, like everybody was working for two or more years. Uh, the new DXVK, which is DirectX, 9, 10, 11, the updated VKD3D, which is 12, and the merge of the VK, I mean, the DX8 VK with the DXVK. So now we we have the whole DirectX 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 uh, support. Uh, if you're questioning, why the, how the hell do I get support for DirectX uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7? Wine, just wine alone will work. And because Proton is based on Wine, then basically by default you're getting that baby. Uh, the new Wayland also came up, came out with a protocol 1.34. This 35 and 36 already, but the 34 is the one that actually brought explicit sync for Wayland. New KDE version six. That's awesome. It's to say the least. Like it's awesome. And the work, the amount of work that they're doing is just, it's amazing. The, the KDE uh, developer team like needs an some, you know, applause there. Uh, new GNOME 46, which is the one that's being used on Ubuntu uh, 2404, and GNOME 47 that will come out for the Ubuntu 2410. 46.1, which already came out, um, and it's already in Ubuntu 2404, already fixes some of the, actually the two biggest issues with windows overlapping each other and i think there was something else about copying and stuff like that that got fixed so we don't have to worry about that that's awesome so you can just work and have your own um nice experience with kde or gnome there depending on your hardware of course and the nvidia card so hopefully this is more than uh a, a lot of good news for everybody in terms of i would say turning the year 2024 into the beginning, it could be the beginning of gaming on Linux as a whole, because it's a huge step forward. It's a jump, actually. So th there's so many things that just positively happened that came together in this last six months. I can't imagine how 2024 is going to end in regards to gaming on Linux as a whole. Okay. Uh, thank you. And if you want to continue, you can watch the other video um, or stay here and, and follow with the, the next one.